Alright, so in this video, we're gonna cover Lesson 3, Assets, and Section 1 is about cash and cash equivalents. So for the outline of this lesson, first, let's have a recap about assets. And second, let's recall the current and non-current classification of assets. And then I'm gonna discuss the definition of cash, as well as some of the examples. And third, the definition of cash equivalents and also some examples all right so for the recap assets so this is the definition of the standard assets are present economic resources controlled by the entity as a result of past events and from which future economic benefits are expected to flow to the entity so just take note i have highlighted here the key points there should be present economic resources. And for the assets to be recognized, it must have resulted from past events. And of course, there should be future economic benefits. Alright? So again, just to recap, we have two classifications of assets. Current and non-current assets. So let's dive deep into this too. When we say current assets, these are expected to be realized in cash or sold or consumed within the entity's operating cycle or one year, take note, whichever is longer. So I highly suggest that you watch Lesson 1, Section 1 of CMA Part 1, wherein I have discussed about the concept of the operating cycle. So some of the examples of current assets we have here, cash and cash equivalents, which is of course the first topic for section 3. And then we have receivables, prepaid expenses, and inventory. So in the succeeding sections, I'll be covering each one of this. The second classification of assets, we have non-current assets. So this is defined as long-term investments for which full value will not be realized within the accounting year. So meaning all the assets which are expected to be realized beyond one year. Okay, so we have here examples of non-current assets. We have property, plant, and equipment, land, building, intangible assets, investment, and funds. So likewise, I'll be discussing each one of this in the succeeding lessons. So now let's go to the main topic of this lesson, cash and cash equivalents. So first, let's talk about cash. So when we say cash, it includes this too. Cash on hand and demand deposits. So how do we define cash on hand? So cash on hand is in the form of currency which includes all bills, coins, and currency notes. So I guess this is very understandable. These include all your paper bills and coins, okay? On the other hand, when we say demand deposits, these are available to be withdrawn at any time without penalty and also these have the same liquidity as cash. So in effect, we include this as part of cash. So we have your examples of cash, coins, currencies, petty cash, cash in savings account, cash in checking account, and money orders. So now let's talk about cash equivalence. So this is the definition from the standard. Cash equivalents are short-term, highly liquid investments that are readily convertible to known amount of cash and that are subject to insignificant risk of changes in value. So, when we say short-term, our definition here is within one month to three months, okay? So, it's highly liquid meaning it is readily convertible into cash, okay? And in case there are changes in value, there's only insignificant impact. So, we have here examples of cash equivalents. First, treasury bills. Second, marketable securities. Third, money market funds. Fourth, commercial papers. Fifth, short-term government bonds. So, this ends this lesson. It's very short. Comment below if you have questions or clarifications. And please watch the succeeding videos since I will be discussing further each of the assets. My name is Jean. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, hit like, share, and subscribe. Till next time.